Pro Football Doc Podcast. This podcast kind of kicks off the 2021 football. We've had guests all off season and they've been great. And in some ways, I think it's appropriate to, uh, A, there's lots of new cycle coming up here. Uh, B, I think it's appropriate to end with uh, Chuck Liddell. Uh, as our podcast guest from last week. We're going to get into our regular season podcast now where we have lots of rundown of injuries. We'll still have a topic to go, but uh, we try and stay in the 40-minute mark, plus minus every week. So no guest this week. You just have to deal with me. But we do have a special guest this week. I think you know I don't love talking about COVID. A, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. So whenever I speak about COVID, I'm talking about general medical knowledge. I'm not an infectious disease expert. I'm trying to interpret for you the fan COVID related to the NFL and giving you my insider knowledge. But I'm not trying to be a world infectious disease expert in any way, shape, or form. Just trying to interpret some of the things that are going on. And uh, COVID is the special guest and continues to be Delta variant or not. But the title of this part of the po podcast is COVID craziness, 2021 season. I'm not saying that people are crazy, that COVID is no big deal. And I'm not saying you're crazy to be overly concerned about COVID. No, I'm just trying to point out some things where Let's just try and play it up the middle and not get so political one side or the other. And it just seems like I'm taking a risk here. But every time I seem to tweet or say something about COVID, I've got half the audience hating me for one reason and half audience hating me for the exact opposite reason. So for example, when I pointed out after the end of the season last year that there was no across the line of scrimmage transmission from one player to another, from one team to another in the act of coverage, blocking, tackling, anything. And some of you said, well, of course not. These are all young health people. Why would you think that? And some of you said, you know, why are you spewing this false narrative or, or people were tested? Yeah, look, the bottom line is I'm trying to give you my middling opinions based on my experience, but I'm not an infectious disease expert. But let's talk about the history and where now I think there is still some craziness out there. And I'll point out what I think is good and what is not good. Remember last year, about this time, 12 months ago, I outlined three reasons why the NFL will play in 2021. I said the NFL will start and start on time. Will they finish? I thought there would be some twists and turns before they did. And I think I was in the minority opinion, if you remember back last year, but it was all based on medicine, my opinions and science. And some of the three reasons were, you know, market timing, the NFL had a chance to prepare. Uh, they were in the off season. The NFL knew, knew what it was doing. It just played its hand close to its vest, and it turned out they handled the pandemic fairly well. Yes, there were twists and turns. And there was alignment between ownership and players. And I think that's key, having the alignment. They didn't have the baseball union fights, et cetera, because their revenues were tied. Now, if you go to the other article that I wrote, this is one of my very first articles for this site. Remember at this point, last year as people were starting to report there were a lot of players and coaches saying we don't know what's happening and google a year ago the the articles that were out there so i wrote this article saying nfl players slash coaches need to better understand viral load and uh thankfully i i took a lot of slings and arrows for it but thankfully it turned out to be mostly true the concept of viral load is that you don't typically get coronavirus by walking by someone in the grocery store. 
by transiently tackling someone. It's prolonged contact within six feet for 15 minutes. It's when your risk goes up. And that was the concept of viral load. And that turned out to be true, at least for the NFL. And remember, I'm just trying to keep my comments to sports, sports leagues in the NFL. I'm not trying to get over my skis and talk about society in general. So please, uh, no hate on this stuff. But that viral load concept turned out to be true. The NFL started, started on time. They did finish. Yes, plenty of twists and turns. And we'll get into now where the COVID craziness has not stopped. And remember, I use craziness loosely. But there's a lot of people out there saying a bunch of different things. And I want to share with you my opinions heading into this season. Who knows if I'll be right? Who knows if I'll be wrong? Look, um, last year, I think I was in the minority and there was a lot of hate and it turned out to be relatively correct. So what I wanted to share with you is, for example, here, uh, Derek, nice guy, says, admire the work, saddens me that a medical professional is condoning the wearing of wristbands to identify medicines. I appreciate the admiration, but don't assume. I, I didn't say I liked wristbands, and I'll talk about wristbands. I'm just reporting there. But here's my point. I'm not sure why COVID has become divisive. And I get it. Society has become somewhat divisive. But for this podcast, as we talk about COVID, I'm trying to talk about it from a neutral standpoint, give you my take on the science, but also my take on the league and the players and how they're handling it, and how perhaps we should be less angry in general and just talk logically about what this all is and what it all means. And so that's why, you know, taking some questions, the testing and different things. I'll try and cover most of this stuff. So uh, thank you here. So a couple of things uh, we'll go through. Stefania Bell had a nice uh, thread uh, interview from Dr. Alan Sills. This was of a couple of days ago. 80% of players across the league have begun the vaccination process, at least one injection. Now understand if you've had COVID before, one injection is enough is what they're saying uh, to qualify, at least for the NFL protocols. Once again, I'm just speaking NFL protocols. I'm not saying they're right or wrong. I'm just giving what it is. Nine clubs were at 90% or greater. That's since gone, gone up. And five clubs below 70%. The new policy, here it is. One dose of the vaccine considered fully vaccinated after 14 days if you had COVID before unvaccinated individuals, daily PCR testing before you enter the building. Vaccinated, you get two, one test every two weeks and you're not automatically held out of activities if there's a COVID exposure. That's huge. Uh, anyone vaccinated will get tested when you have symptoms, but otherwise it's every couple of weeks. Look, I've been saying for a while on Twitter and otherwise that the vast majority of teams by week one of the regular season, not the beginning of training camp, but by week one of the regular seasons will be vaccinated. Alan Sills said that uh, uh, the vaccination rate is, continues to grow. And I think they're going to hit that 85% threshold, the vast majority of teams. The latest is 10 teams have at least 90% of players vaccinated, which is certainly good news. And it continues to rise. And I'll cover vaccinations as to why people should or shouldn't get vaccinated and people have the right to say no. So don't get mad at me here. I'm just saying this is what's happening. I'm just saying that I anticipate because of competitive advantage the vast majority, if not all teams, will hit that 85%. I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I'm just giving you the facts there. And if you look at it here, the latest from just to this morning, 83.6% of players vaccinated overall. 
So league wide, they're getting close to 85%. Now this is one shot, right? So in another couple of weeks or three weeks or four weeks, they'll get there before the season starts. 10 clubs have 90% or more. 83.6% of the league is vaccinated. In terms of players, um, all teams at least 60%. So continued vaccination progress. Now, once again, don't get mad at me on Twitter and say, why do they even need vaccinations? That's not my point. I'm just telling you what the NFL has decided to do. I do believe it's your right as an individual to decide whether to be vaccinated or not. Look at your own particular circumstance. I am vaccinated. vaccinated. My wife is vaccinated. My older daughter is vaccinated. My young kids are not yet. We'll make those decisions as they continue to roll on. So once again, don't get angry at me over what I'm sort of trying to share here. It's not my agenda. It's just what's out there. Now, the interesting thing is coaches and staff were essentially required to, just like medical professionals. Rick Dennison is out at off, as offensive line coach and run game coordinator uh, because of it. There's some other coaches as well. Uh, but players are not required to do it. Now, this sort of hit a controversy yesterday, this whole wristband thing. And it got people really angry, right? I mean, is this a HIPAA violation? You're revealing their rights with the band. A yellow band means that you're not, as seen here, not vaccinated or not vaccinated fully yet and under a different protocol. And there were a lot of people angry about this. You know, and today, this morning, on the issue of colored wristbands identifying unvaccinated players, we did not agree to them and think they are unnecessary. So, um, look, let me just address the wristband issue for a while. Whether you think they're necessary or not necessary, it's what NL and teams have decided to do. <coughs> but it's not a HIPAA issue. It's just how they decided, and we'll address HIPAA again later in relation to Dak's comments. But it doesn't matter. And that's why I agree with J.C. Treader. It doesn't matter. Let's not get so angry about wristbands or no wristbands. Let me tell you, everyone in the building knows who's vaccinated and who's not vaccinated either from conversation, because it's a very tight knit of people, small group of people, or by what you have to do. There are people that have to go around wearing masks all the time. And there are certain people who can take off their masks in certain situations. It becomes very obvious who's vaccinated and not vaccinated. Certain, the rules are different. So whether you have a wristband or not, and it's a certain color or not, isn't really revealing anything about HIPAA or your status. Your status is going to be known on how you have to follow the rules, unless you want to say you're that rare person who's going to fall, is vaccinated, but is following all of the unvaccinated rules. Bottom line is, I don't think the wristbands are that big of a deal. Whether you believe that they're right or believe that they're wrong, one's going to know. So the NFL is confidential drug testing, substances of abuse. No one is supposed to know if you're in the program. Let me tell you, the vast majority of the people in the building unofficially knew who was in the program. Yes, you could hide it from everyone else by demanding that your P test was always away from the facility. But most guys just chose to do it out of convenience at the facility. So Monday morning, when you saw the same guy every week getting tested, you kind of knew that they were in the program, even though they weren't officially designated as in the program. So very few it's kept among a team, I guess, is my point of view. Very few. So I think there's a little bit of overreaction uh, to... Uh, what's going on over there. Oops, I did the wrong thing there, guys. I don't want to share here, the screen here. Um, anyways, as we continue some of the COVID 
craziness, I'll call it. There's going to be a lot of unique things that happen with the NFL protocols. And I don't think they're all going to be perfect. But if you remember last year, they evolved. And I think that's how they got through it. In the beginning, I was like, you should have masks on the sidelines in the close quarters of locker rooms. And they didn't enforce that. And then they changed and they did. Uh, look, there are a lot of things that were silly about what the NFL was doing, but they were learning too. And overall, I think they did a really good job uh, adapting. There are going to be lots of COVID crazy things this year that don't make sense. I get it. Um, Packers fans are upset. There's no bike riding among kids, you know, their tradition. Uh, the players are borrowing their kid's bike and the kid running along because everyone's got to keep away. I, I get it. There's going to be unpopular decisions just like the wristband. But overall, I think it's just, we got to deal with the COVID craziness. Look, look at poor John Rahm. He received the vaccine almost two months ago and he's tested positive on two separate times since. The first time missed out on a big payday memorial and now he's not headed to the Olympics. I mean, that's part of the COVID craziness in the world that we're in. And we will address the Delta issue before we finish this segment as well. So here's the big fundamental difference. Fully vaccinated individuals will be tested for COVID once every two weeks. Individuals who aren't will have daily testing. And if there are false positives, I mean, look, the window to be caught if you're positive, if you're, if you're every two weeks versus every day, that in and of itself is a huge competitive advantage. You might get to play that game, uh, et cetera. Now, I'm not saying this is the perfect policy the, the NFL has. I'm just saying this is the policy. And we have to, that's the policy players, and individuals are living with. Um, that's all I'm trying to say. Now, there's been a lot of argument among the players. Cole Beasley, this is actually a thread between Cole Beasley and his teammate. And you can look at it yourself. Um, but Jerry Hughes says it, I understand freedom of choice and you do have freedom of choice, but our job has been, has put rules in place. Rules are rules, just like healthcare workers have to be vaccinated. At the end of the day, rules are rules. There are a lot of rules I don't agree with, but I have to abide by if I want to stay out of trouble. And that's kind of what I think that's like, I'm not supporting everything, but that's kind of where you're at. So um, Ian Rappaport's talking about a vaccination status affect where the player is assigned. For timing reasons alone, an unsigned play free agent has to wait five days before he can enter the building. Otherwise, if he's not vaccinated, whereas a vaccinated player can enter. That's huge to get signed. So players can, and what Jerry Hughes is saying is players can make their choices, but they cannot choose their consequences. And the NFL continues to incentivize all of this. Now you may say the incentives are wrong, it's unfair. Look, at least the players aren't required to get the vaccine. Healthcare workers are required. Coaches were required, staff was required. So the players are actually catching a break here. I'm not saying the policies are completely correct. I'm just saying it is what it is. I'm reporting them to you and interpreting them for you. That's all I'm trying to do. Uh, so it kind of is what it is at, uh, at this point in time. Uh, you know, Emmanuel Sanders said, uh, look, he's received his first dose. Accountability, availability, don't have time to deal with no BS during the season. Chasing greatness. So he showed his vaccination card. This is from Emmanuel Sanders. Look, it's reported that Bradley Gilbert says he had no idea whether Sanders was planning to get vaccinated prior to the leak memo that dropped the other day, but the bottom line is it is. He is now because of the vaccination carrot. Bruce Arian says he'll find unvaccinated players 14,000 and change for every protocol breach. It's not a Bruce Arians fine, it's the league fine. But Bruce Aarons is going to say he's monitoring it. And at first offense, you're going to get fined as opposed to any sort of grace period or reminder. And the bottom line is 
that's another vaccine carrot. Like he's saying, let's just do it and move on. Look, vaccinated players also have a quicker path to returning to action if they come in contact with an infected person. Besides not being held out for close contacts and tested less, there's a quicker path back. Whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent is a different story. That's what it is. So Michael Irvin, his comments that created some controversy said, look, they're not political. I don't care about the right wing. I don't care about the left wing. I only care about a ring. My comments are, my COVID analysis has nothing to do with right wing or left wing. Look, I'm about right to choose, but I'm just telling you, this is why I said all along, the vaccine carried is too great. The vast majority of the league will end up being vaccinated. The coal beans of the world won't, but there's room for seven players out of the 53 to be unvaccinated and still get to the 85% threshold. That gives te teams some freedom. So anyways, that's kind of what we're saying with the uh, COVID craziness. And before I, I uh, finish off here, um, let's talk a little bit about the Delta variant. It's still new, it's still different. And this is just my impression orthopedically. Look, there's no question, and we should not be surprised that any vaccine doesn't cover all variants. Every year, we have a new regular flu vaccine in the fall that we for players and people in the general public. It's not news that variants come up and mutations come up. And the vaccine you get for the flu this year versus this year or the year before is different. And I think that's probably headed with COVID probably a second round there's a booster maybe the booster would be a felta for the delta variant but ultimately there's likely to be an epsilon variant it, you know that's how diseases work now so far medically although it's clear that you can still test positive for covid after you're vaccinated there's a couple reasons for that now right the johnson and johnson vaccine was said to be 68 percent effective the Pfizer, Moderna were in the mid 90s. It's not, that's not 100%. But also the Delta variant seems to sometimes elude the vaccine. However, testing positive and being on a ventilator in the ICU are two different things. And it does seem either the Delta variant is weaker, but certainly it is weaker in those so far early data who have been vaccinated, even though it doesn't prevent you from getting it. So those are some good things. And it does seem the bad news is the Delta variant might be more transmissible um, than what the original coronavirus seemed to be. We got to work these things out. And I'm sure the NFL and Dr. Sills will. So hopefully you hear my opinions and thoughts about the COVID craziness. I'm not critical of the NFL. I'm not agreeing with everything that they're doing. I'm trying to explain to you what's happening, why league players around the league will get vaccinated at high numbers, and it's happening, and uh, what it means. And that's all I'm trying to do. To each of you out there, politically or otherwise, personal choice, I agree with that. And it's up to you. Uh, but uh, that's where we are in this world of COVID and some of the COVID craziness. All right, let's take a break here and we'll come back with part two of the Pro Football Doc podcast and hopefully uh, have some more fun uh, talking about some uh, football related things. As it is draft time for a lot of people, I'm involved in a couple of drafts right now and we can talk about uh, a few things. All right, guys, uh, we'll see you on the other side. 